Luda baby girl. Oh, how cute she is. Hi. Oh. Oh, what a cute dog. Oh, she's so cute. Where'd you get her? Yeah, um, she, she's a good girl. Oh. How cute. Break. Yeah. Hi. Good girl. Yes, she did. So now she just has to learn to think through. And wait the, the, go, she'll go on the avoidance. Her wires cross when I start baby talking her. Pet her. What's her name? That's a good girl. She's cute. That's a good girl. Hey. Nice work. You see that spot? She's like, oh, that spot. I like her. Hey, what's your name? Hi. Dogs love me. Fan is watching from her window. <laughs> Wave to her. Good hey! Good She's been trained for how many years to lunge at a person when they do that? Because it's reinforced by petting. I think that's her primary interaction with humans. Like she doesn't have other modes that she goes into with you. you know, she doesn't know how when that's appropriate, when it's not appropriate. I think that's just her association to literally the entire human species. Crazy excited. Exactly. One or two. But and the thing is is that uh, it's not the couch necessarily and all that, that lovey dovey stuff that created it. It's that with the absence of tough love, like a firm hand when needed. And that's what this creates, yeah. If she had only a firm hand, we'd see some other fallout. But if there's a balance of love and affection and, and, 
and caring for the dog, but then also a firm hand when needed, which is tough love. Then we got balance. Then we got nature. Then then we got a dog who's not who's not needing rehab. Yeah, this dog this dog's going through rehab for sure for the mind. Good girl. The same way a biting dog would, or or a, a dog who has separation anxiety or, or extreme anxiety issues. She's going through it. The same stuff. Good girl. We teach them to be calm in their mind uh, as a default state of mind. And that's what she's learning as well. Good girl. You're so calm when she makes a mistake. Yeah, it's hers to make. You know, it's like especially the first week, week and a half, we like to let the dogs just do, we set the rules, we show them the rules, but then we allow them to explore those boundaries, feel when they get the correction, how to remedy it by going back into the particular position, and she's free to make all these choices so that she can learn what happens when she does make those choices. Therefore, it's not on her mind anymore, and therefore there's no stress, no anxiety. You just If you're gonna leave position, go ahead. This is just what's gonna happen. You're gonna get corrected and put back, but if you wait until I release you, when it's time, you can go have fun, and there won't be any corrections. Right? That was a setup. I told you guys when I feel like the dog's pushing the boundary, then I set them up to, because they're not paying attention, right? So if I slow down, they're going to end up in front. She got a correction that I set up because I felt her pushing the boundary. So look, she gets close to the boundary. I'm going to dip and ding, right? Because what's the rules? If you can't see my leg, the pressure's on. Right, if you're out in front. So I'm just showing her, don't test it, don't tease that too much because that's what happens. Good girl. And then she hangs out back here. Heck, that's clarity right there. Right? A correction versus affection. That makes it very clear. Good girl. It's like the electric fence, I said. If there was a flag on my leg, as soon as she passes this, bang, pressure's on, and then once she's here, pressure's off, right? So I can I have my, I can move my body, however. And, uh, and if she's not there, I can turn pressure on. She gets there, turns off. Kind of and then again, if they push the line, she just... Uh, she didn't get corrected that time, good girl. Because she was paying attention. So if I slow down. Now we're gonna have a, a conversation of like an inch here. Good. Good, you see that? Now she's starting to not go past it when I kind of do this. Exaggerated stuff here. Good. She's really paying attention to her position. There she goes. Right, pressure on. Pressure on. Good. See what I do here? Good. You see that? Very pretty, very good, stay. That's my baby girl, break! like this. They don't get the discipline they need because they're sweet. Sweet dogs can hurt people too though. We actually know somebody who had a, who has a very sweet dog. The dog is very 
loving and you know, fun, high energy. And that very dog who has no issues with aggression broke two fucking legs on a human being because it can't calm down. You know what I mean? Can't calm down, smash right into the kneecaps. That kind of shit. They're still animals. We still need to be able to snap our fingers and they calm down. You know what I mean? And they do what they're told. Right? But you look at the dog and you're like, wow, the training's doing so, you know, she's doing so great, but what it is, she's just living with humans that expect different things is really what it comes down to. We say no to certain things and yes to different things more consistent, and then the dog just, the dog's adapting to its new environment and its new people. That's all that's really happening. And then we just teach the, the humans to, uh, to do what we do so they can go, go home and continue it, okay? As soon as she hears that beep, just like last time, it means follow, it means to get into position. She's not allowed to sniff now because that was her free time to sniff, right? As soon as she hears, hears a beep, no more sniffing, none of that, just fall off, okay? There it is. it's not so cute because it's not manageable. Even though she's not being mean or anything like that, it's still a problem. Okay? As soon as you have control over her and you've done the work and you've got the relationship and you can turn off her energy whenever you want, then you can you can let her be crazy. Let her be crazy. Because you know you can go and you turn it off. But remember this. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? So if you stop being the leader, they stop being the follower. Okay? And then they do whatever they want, and then it's hard to get back on the way. So it's a lifestyle change, and once you get it, everything's good. Right? That's impressive. Yeah. Scored. Hi, I was just admiring. It's so nice. <laughs> that dials down from 25 to 0 and when she's right now because the command's so new to her. When she starts giving me 75, 50%, her position's wobbly because she's paying too much attention to either Julie or something else. Okay, so that correction was saying, not yes, you were out of position, but it was also saying, pay attention. Okay, I asked you to do something, which is follow me. Stop messing with it. So if you're firm with the little things, you never see the big things. That's why, we're, that's why a lot of trainers are like, don't let them pull you, or make sure they do this. They'll sit before they go out the door. It's simply just to keep the dog's attitude and their mind where it needs to be, and then everything's easy. So as soon as I see her being fussy, like just not really paying attention, or any type of attitude or something, it's corrected firmly, and therefore there's never any pulling, lunging, or any of the stuff that everyone complains about, because we're too busy correcting the small things. Okay, her energy elevated right now, and she got all wiggly, and, and, and inappropriately so, because she's in the command, it's corrected. Because you're breaking rule number one, which is stay calm unless invited otherwise. Okay? 